Greetings, Atlings. Welcome to another episode of A Day in the Life. Today we have Project Astrid in the house. It's a Nissan Tida 5MT. And uh, we've been having some dead pedal issues. What appears to be the throttle body. We already changed the pedal sensor assembly in the cabin. So now this is the only other suspect because all the wiring seems to be in place. And uh, we have inspected this. We've cleaned it. It's not seized. It's moving okay. There are no electrical trouble codes with the engine management, so it could just be an intermittent uh, mechanical issue. So we will crack this open and get to see what the motor assembly is like and probably check if there are any internal faults. So let's get to it, shall we? So typically, these uh, throttle bodies are secured by either rivets or screws that don't have ordinary Phillips or flat heads because they don't want people messing around here. So since we've already taken that off, we've machined the rivet heads off, we are able to get into the internals. And this electrical connector here uh, goes through to the inside of the cover. So those two are for the motor, to supply power to the motor. This guy is the throttle pedal position sensor. It's basically, let me try and rotate it for you guys to see. It's basically a sensor that determines where the throttle is sitting so that it can talk to the engine control to manage your throttle body. So it's, it's fairly simple, straightforward. You have the motor that powers the assembly through a reduction gear, which then operates the, the flap, so to speak. So that butterfly is managed by that guy, that way. So there are two adjustment uh, stops. This one on the outside is user adjustable and it has a tab that goes in there. Then there's an additional one in here for service crew like myself to also make further adjustments should that be necessary. So since we are suspecting the motor, we will take these wheels off and then take a look at the motor itself and test it. Let's get to that, shall we?
right, so on further inspection, we did find that the motor was just a little waterlogged, just a little. It wasn't much. I don't know whether that was condensation building up on the inside, but uh, we've managed to dry it with a hot air gun and uh, that seems to be sorted. So now the next thing is to check the connectivity between the port, electrical port here, and the components itself. So we are going to use our trusty multimeter and just test the, the pinout. So for the motor feed, if my memory serves me right, it should be the last pin here. Uh, yep, that's it. So that's good connectivity. And the second leg of the motor connector. Just about right. Let's try that first leg again. That is acceptable to me. So it doesn't look like this is uh, the culprit. Um, hmm. I'm wondering how we'll test this TPS. Well, uh, I guess that's for later because now the main assemblies are sorted. We'll put this back on the car, test it, see whether we get any trouble codes, see how the drive is, and if necessary, we'll just replace it for some peace of mind. All right, on that bombshell, thank you for keeping me company. Till the next time, peace.